Hello friend and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to show you how I pack a mug for shipment. My mugs are ceramic and therefore are very fragile. It's with gratitude that I can say that I have not yet had a report of a mug arriving broken. I like to think my packing has a majority to do with their safe arrival, but I don't want to be too cocky. Things do happen and pots manage to break still in the mail sometimes, despite everyone's best efforts. The first thing we need to do is get a box ready. For my mugs, I like to use the 7x7x7 Priority Mailer Box from USPS. The main reason I like these is because they're free, though you do have to ship your mugs Priority Mail when you use this box, which costs more than Ground Advantage alternatives. I still like these boxes because the Priority Mail usually arrives faster and that makes most people a little happier. For me, it all washes out in the end on something as small as a mug. Make whatever choice seems right for you. I aim to make my packaging as sustainable as possible. I'm constantly looking for ways to eliminate waste. This is a pursuit and a practice, and I don't claim to be perfect. In this pursuit, I use water-activated tape from Eco Enclosed for my packages. I found that tape was where I was creating the most plastic waste in my packaging, so the switch was a big win for me. I highly recommend water-activated tape. I keep a sponge handy to apply the water to the tape, it can be a bit sticky, but once you get the hang of it, it's a very strong tape to help save the planet with. They make and sell a dispenser for water-activated tape as well, if you don't want to fuss around with a wet sponge. At the bottom of the package, I like to use a layer of biodegradable packing peanuts. I like packing peanuts over craft paper for the bottom layer because when I load the box, the peanuts hold their form and provide excellent support without much additional regard on my part. These biodegradable packing peanuts are made of cornstarch and can easily be dissolved in water. You can dissolve them right down your kitchen sink without any concerns. When prepping the mug for its journey across the country, I include one of my business cards and a bag of whatever tasty tea I have handy. I tend to favor Big Low Teas, but you never know what I might toss in there. I'm not sponsored or anything, I just like the idea of y'all enjoying some tasty tea on me in your new mug. The next step is to wrap up the mug. I use honeycomb paper, known to many as Ranpak, to wrap my mugs for shipping. Ranpak is effectively an eco-friendly paper alternative to plastic bubble wrap. Now you may notice that I don't use my Ranpak dispenser how it was intended, and you are correct. My dispenser is finangled to hold an off-brand honeycomb paper replacement roll. It is what it is. I don't want to pay extra for the real stuff or for a new dispenser. I use a ton of this stuff, taking extra care to make sure that the handle is especially cushioned for transport. Once the mug is heavily wrapped, it's time to tuck it into the box. I place the mug into the box on its side with the mug handle evenly facing left. I fill the rest of the void space with craft paper, also sometimes called packing paper or masking paper. And honestly, if these are all different kinds of paper, it doesn't really matter. I order whatever version of this paper is the best deal at the time. The packing paper is more affordable than the biodegradable packing peanuts. When working the paper in around the sides and the top, I have much more control of how this mug is shifting, so the paper works just fine. When it's an order for a first time customer, I like to try to include a magnet or a sticker in the order as well, if I have them on hand. No promises, sometimes you just get lucky, but I am a big fan of adding unpromised extras into my packages, so the odds for getting lucky are pretty good. The goal is to create at least an inch of cushion space entirely around the outside of the box and the mug within the nest. You should be able to shake the box and hear nothing, and feel no movement at all. If there's any movement or shifting when you shake the box, it isn't packed well enough. Once I'm satisfied that the mug is packed appropriately, all that's left is to close up the box and cover it with fragile stickers. There's debate on the effectiveness of fragile stickers. I've thought about this in depth for a while, and what I've come to determine is that it comes down to how you think about people. I choose to think that most people are good. I hold a worldview that most people, when they see a fragile sticker, are going to do the right thing and take a little extra care. I have of course heard the argument that fragile stickers encourage people to kick your packages around the post office, and maybe in some cases that's true, but I like to believe that for the most part, people are good people. To that effect, I see fragile stickers as one more thing that I can do to ensure the safety of my work, 
by communicating the fragility of the contents of my package to those responsible for its care and transport. Thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. I hope you enjoy seeing this part of my process. If you'd like to see what mugs I currently have available in my shop, you can find them at bluenosetrading.com. If you'd like to stick around for a weekly art video and daily art shorts, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. Remember that you have great ideas, most people are good, drink lots of water, and I will see you all next week. Mm -hmm.